Hello, good people, and welcome to Finance Skills Hub. Here, we learn, we connect, and we grow. It's an exciting new year, and in this new year, I don't want you to hold back on all the things you can do with Microsoft Excel, Power BI, and the Office tools. So we start off with this exciting tutorial on how you can create a dynamic calendar slicer in your dashboard. It allows your users to select any day, drop down a certain month, and with these combinations, your KPIs easily calculate. So if you are game, join me in Excel and let's go through this in a few minutes. So here's a look at our dashboard. It allows me to toggle between income and expense. Okay, so I can show any of these. I can also show both in this trend. Okay, then if I want to see the income or expense for a particular period, I can use this drop down to select the month. Okay, so here I want to go down to March. Okay, and this gives me the period. So if you look at June, you realize that let's say on the first day, we didn't record any expense. Second day, there was nothing here. But I'm able to select from day one all the way to day five. And then I get this dynamic calculation and my net and my net as well. So we just want to learn how to create this dynamic calendar slicer and how you can use it in your dashboard. So let's get to it. Okay, so we are going to begin with the start version of the dashboard. I've removed all the elements we are going to use. So here, the basic idea is when the user comes here, you select the month from a drop down list. We'll have the slicer for the days here. And then based on these combinations and the year, the income for the selected period and then the expense will show up and then the net is also calculated. So we we'll begin with the raw data. So I have this as a table and I'm going to name this transactions. So I'll go to the table design and name this transactions. Okay, so this makes it easy for me to reference the entire table in my calculations. Right. Now, if you look at our table, all the dates uh, in 2020 okay so we can easily put in 2020 here okay now let's talk about the month so in the month we want the user to be able to select the 12 months from here it would be best to put this in a drop down or data validation so standing in here i'll go to data okay and data validation here change any value to a list and then point to the source. So the source is going to be the source. Control shift down and then I have selected this. Okay, so here I can now select any month. So let's put in June. So when the user selects June from here, I want to harvest that selection. So I'm going to reference the cell. Okay, so we have these two at the moment. Now the next thing is to work on the day selection. We could do it from here, okay, from the dates in the original transactions table. I want to avoid a situation where we miss days. If you look at the original data, realize that we are missing some days we didn't have transactions. And we want all the 31 days present. It is better to create something called a calendar table, which has the full complement of all the days in the month. Okay, so to do that, we need to take this into the data model. So the data model sits in Power Pivot. So I have Power Pivot here. If you are using it for the first time, you can activate it by going to data and then you click on this go to Power Pivot window. It activates, okay. And then once the tab is here, you can come to the Power Pivot tab, stand in the table, and then add that table to the data model. Okay, so when you do that, it opens this Power Pivot environment. So our original table has been loaded here, okay, but we need to create that calendar table. To do that, I'll come to design, okay, so in design, I have date table. I'll drop this and then create a new calendar table using new. So when I hit new, you realize that it creates a new table, so this table has all the date attributes you can add or edit 
So as an example, I have my dates here expressed in date and time. I can format this to original time, to original date by coming here and then choose in the format this original date. Okay. So you realize from here that you have the full complement of all the days in the month. You can edit certain columns here. For example, in the month, I want it abbreviated to match my data validation. So when I select this column, the formula is here. I can edit it. So 4M gives me the four M gives me the full month. Okay, so I can edit this to three, and then I'll press enter. So this gives me the abbreviated version. Okay, now I want to edit this to day instead of day of week number. Okay, so I can double click the header. Okay, and then call this day and then work on the formula. Instead of week A, I want day. So I'll step in here and then call this day and I'll press enter. So this way I have my one to 31 days all captured here. It is on this column that I'm going to insert my slicer. Okay, now before we proceed, we need to make sure that whatever we select controls our original transactions. So we need to connect these two tables. So to do that, I'll go to the diagram view. Okay, here I have the two tables. So my original transactions is here and my calendar is here. So to connect, I'll use the common columns. So I'll click on the date in the calendar and then drag it onto the transaction side. Okay, so this way the two tables can now talk. This is a one to many connection. So our job here is done and I'll close the power pivot. So when we come here, we can now easily insert a slicer. So to insert a slicer, I'll go to insert, go to slicer, and then in the data model, okay, I have two tables here. I'll open this up and then come to my calendar table. Okay, expand more fields, and then I'll insert this from the day, okay. So if I click OK, you now see that I have the 1 to 31. This controls this table now. Now, to format this properly, I can select the slicer. The slicer tab pops up. And then I can break this into seven columns, OK, for the visual. So I'll break this into seven columns. So this way, when I expand, I easily see this, OK, and then I can select any days that I want. Now, we need to harvest, okay, see the days that we have selected basically. So if I select one, I should see it here, okay. To do that, we are going to use a function from the cube functions called cube rank member. So essentially what a cube rank member does is that, so let's start cube rank member. This is a function, it requires a connection. The connection is your data model. So normally you put a double quote and the data model pops up and then you close the double quote. Okay. It requires an expression. The expression here is the slicer name. So when I do SL, the slicer day pops up. Okay. And then I'll bring a comma and then put in one for rank. Okay. I'm going to explain why I put in one. So it means the first thing I've selected in this slicer is always going to show up. So when I choose two, three, or in that order, right? But the obvious challenge here is that if I haven't selected anything, you read all, I can't use this. If I select multiple days, holding the shift key, and then select the say last day, okay, it still shows one instead of showing me all the five. Okay, so to deal with this problem, we need to create something that will hold the set of days that I have selected. So we are going to use another function called cube set. Okay, so it's another simple function. So I'll do that here. So I will use equal to cube set. Okay, the same process. So the connection, this data model, I'll bring a comma. The set expression is the slicer. Okay, and then I can bring in a caption. Okay, I'll call this days selected. And then I'll close this. So what 
is happening here is that for all the number of these I have selected, I have it captured here. Okay, now let's do a little test. I want to just count the number of days I have selected. So again, you can do that using cube set count. Okay, so this set will tell me that I have selected five. Okay, if I select one, it will tell me one. If I select multiple, it will tell me I have 11 and so on. So at least we know that this is pregnant with a lot of days selected. We can see all the days that we have selected. Okay, let's say five. Let me do five here. Okay, by just editing this original formula. So instead of one, I'll put in sequence. Okay, and then come and select the count. Okay, so this way you see that all the days that I have selected will now pop up here. Right. Okay, so at least we know that at this point, if I have this, I have that, and then I have my month, I can now create all my calculations. This is the most important part of the process. Okay, so now let's go and create our measures. Okay, so essentially we want to see the total amount Okay, so we want to add up everything. And it will be good to use the data model to calculate this. So we'll go back to the data model, going to power pivot, measures, new measure. Okay, and then in the transactions table, I'm going to call this total amount. Okay, so here, this is a basic sum. So our sum is DAX, okay, the transactions table. I'll close this, okay? And then when I check the formula, everything is okay. Okay, format this using a thousand separator and then I'll click okay. okay. So what I've done is just a sum of everything here. Now to see that I can use another cube function. So that cube function is going to be cube value. Okay, so I will use cube value, call the data model, okay? and then bring a comma, and then I'll call my measure. So the measures is going to be measures dot, and then total amount, what I just calculated. And then I'll close this. So this gives me 154741, which essentially is a sum of everything that I have here. Right, so if I hover, you see that I have this. But we don't want this. We want it split by income and expense. All this in a dynamic way, okay? So we are now going to create the income version of this and then the expense version of this. So we already know that we can use the Q value to achieve this. All we need to do is to filter this value. Okay, so let's come to the formula. Okay, and it's going to be the same approach, Q value. This workbook data model. Okay, bring a double quote. We call our measures dot total amount okay and then i'll close this now i need to filter this okay so first i want to filter this by income so i'll bring a comma okay and then provide income as a criteria okay to do that we need to know where income sits it sits in the transaction as type so i'll bring a comma bring a double quote call transactions which is the table bring a dot it lists all the columns that I have. So I'll call type, okay, and then bring another dot. So here I'm supposed to now reference income. The dynamic way to do this is to bring a square bracket, a double quote, an ampersand to join the selection, and then I'll select this, okay. And then close it with another ampersand, a double quote, close your square bracket, close double quote, okay. So this way, I can now filter this by income, okay? But this is not enough. We need to filter this by income and the date selected, okay? So for the date selected, we already have the date selected here, and then we also have the month here, okay? So let's filter this again. So I'll continue. I'll bring a comma. So this member expression is for the day selected. I already have it here. Okay, so I'm going to select this F4 to log this because I'll be copying this down. Okay, 
and then for the months we'll use the same method i'll bring a comma okay and then i'm going to go into the calendar table which we calculated so calendar dots okay month dots and then i'll bring the square brackets double quotes the, um, the ampersand okay and then i'm going to select this month which the user is going to select join this with a square bracket in another double quote okay and then i'm done so i'm going to just lock this as well okay so when i do this i now have the selection for june okay so when i do this the response a formula is done here okay i've locked all that is supposed to be locked this i will leave variable so when i copy this down okay i have for expense so on day one there's nothing here but when i select up to five you see that i have my expense showing up here now in situations where we have nothing okay we need to modify this a bit so we'll put this simple function n around this original function okay so n will convert that empty string to zero okay then we can now have our next calculation so equal to this minus that okay so on the first day only income no expense second day nothing Okay, but if I select this, hold the shift key to five, I now have this nicely done. Now let's come to our dashboard and fix this in. So I'll come, select the shape, come to my formula bar, do an equal sign, and then I'll select my income. Okay, so here I'm going to increase this to 18. Okay, loading this, do the same for expense. Click is equal sign okay increase this to 18 as well okay loading this and then for my nets i'll come in here okay and then i'll load in this increase this to 18 as well okay and then i'll load in this okay i can apply my formatting once Control Shift One, Control Shift One, Alt H Nine, Alt H Nine. Okay, so this way it responds. So I'll bring my slicer here. I'm going to cut it. Okay, so when I cut, I have errors temporarily, and then when I paste it here, it comes back. Okay. So I have my slicer already formatted. So when I come to slicer, I will just use the format I've used here, and then I get this responding. So essentially, that is how we achieve this. So if I select multiple days, okay, with this combination, it now calculates everything. And switch, okay, the month as well, and then I have it reading. So you can use this concept to create a dynamic calendar slicer for your user, so that combining days and months, you can do any of these calculations. Please practice and add it to your list of Excel tricks. In this new year, if you want to take a deep dive into Microsoft Excel, Power BI, business presentations, and PowerPoint, please visit our website, finestskillshub.com. Apply now to join our workshop style training sessions, which begins on the 28th of January. So if you give us your details, we'll get back to you with next steps. Thanks for watching and have a good day. If this video was helpful and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send ad to this WhatsApp number. We'll add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel, Finest Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.